Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And whoa, this is a jam packed video. I'm going to move fast. I apologize for that, but I want to try to get it done in less than 10 minutes. I'm going to share with you some new liquidity drivers for XRP, three to be exact. Also, the pre IPO Ripple share price, <laughs> oh, it's strong. And Brad Garlinghouse, he continues to be heard. And Coinbase, there's a trading date. And I must show you an institutional custody provider, how much money they have to run with and who is backing them. Well, the market, Bitcoin really wants to stay over 60,000. It has been playing with that price for the last couple of hours. It just backed off slightly now. We see a 59% dominance, which means there is a lot of other volume flowing into the altcoins. Uh, just a few are taking profit, and those are to be expected because they had some extremely strong days. All right, liquidity drivers. Yep, we get that liquidity improvement when you have pairs to fiat and bitflyer which is one of the largest exchanges in japan for bitcoin they claim to be the number one site for bitcoin i'm not sure if that is correct but they have announced that they are going to create a new japanese yen pair to xrp xlm and monocoin monocoin is the dogecoin of this part of the world. And then looking at Equity Zen, they've had a lot of express deals with the common shares of Ripple. These are pre-IPO financial instruments. And you can see that there was one express deal with an investment size of $149,000. It was gone in less than 24 hours. The share price was super strong at $59.49, 62.46 with fees. This is a very, very strong price. Now, Julia Chatterley, she had an interview with Brad Garlinghouse. She broke that up into part one and part two. You can find it on her Twitter feed. And in part one, we learned that Ripple has signed 20 new companies across the world since the lawsuit was filed. So that is like five to six new customers a month. Very good. And then we have one of the older on-demand liquidity customers that is going to move into a new corridor. That new corridor is in South Africa and the company is Mercury FX. And Mercury FX started with ODL, according to their website, in the Mexican and Philippine corridor. But they are going to move into this new South African corridor and be part of a regulatory sandbox where 52 applications were put in, 52, and they were one of six to make the first phase. In fact, there is another company as well that is also going to use the Ripple technology and the digital asset XRP in that first phase sandbox, and that's Zago. Both of them are using XRP for international cross-border payments. So thanks to Valor, which will be another driver to improve liquidity for XRP, they partnered with Bittrex and they will be able to make that ODL happen from South Africa. Now, in that part two interview that Julia had with Brad, I really want to play for you just this portion where he was asked about Bitcoin. Brad, very quickly, exactly. I know you are a Bitcoin investor. Do you think Bitcoin is too big to fail? I think Bitcoin is not going away, that is for sure. I think Bitcoin is not going away, that is for sure. I totally, completely agree with him. And the reason why I believe that is because there is just too much money being committed into the infrastructure right now. I'm just going to show you just a couple that have my attention. So Coinbase, yep, we have a trading date. 
they are going to be listed on the NASDAQ and appear, I think, if everything goes as it should, on April 14th under the ticker symbol COIN. Now, the Coinbase co-founder, he joined the institutional grade custody company called Fireblock. And Fireblock received $30 million in funding. That was a good size amount. But on March 19th, BNY Mellon participated in another round, and it is a total of $133 million, giving Fireblocks more than $140 million in total to run with. And if you don't know, BNY Mellon is the oldest bank in the United States. And they also announced that they are going to hire Fireblocks for their Bitcoin custody service. So you see the people who are investing in the infrastructure, they will never let Bitcoin fail. And because the investors are seeking to make money, the yields have gone to almost zero in the bonds. We have very real chance that interest rates are gonna go negative this is why they are going to make Bitcoin a viable financial instrument. And this is how the powers to be are going to do it. Now, if you are just paying attention also to who's moving where, well, I hate to say it, but Fireblock also poached a Ripple employee, <laughs> somebody who's been with Ripple for three years and six months. This is Neil Chopra. And in February, he decided he was going to join the Fireblocks. So take, take notice and uh, pay attention to that institutional custody service provider. And now someone asked me, and I'm just going to wrap it up here with a comment because and, and some information that I should have probably included in the last video. Someone said, why all of a sudden the interest in XDC? Well, actually for years, I have been covering whatever impacts this space with a special emphasis on XRP, yes. And I did so quite frankly, because there is just too much mistruth being spread. And that was quite frustrating for for myself to see all of the FUD that was just not deserving of the company Ripple or the digital asset XRP. But I'm a maxi for projects that have community, liquidity, and a purpose. And when I saw the announcement that XDC will be the settlement coin for R3, it was huge. And I became interested in this project more than six months ago when I had the CEO Atul on my channel. And it really, really started to get on my radar screen when I saw that R3 had listed the Zinfin as their tech partner. So I am so interested in anything that is making a difference in this space. And sitting at the table there is Richard Crook. He was with the Royal Bank of Scotland, and he actually did a Ripple POC, but it didn't continue because they needed to have privacy. So he moved to work with Corda, and Corda actually had him working in their office, and he went on to build DASL, D-A-S-L, which is the bridge for the settlement token XDC. So Zinfin is the organization behind XDC, and they can do this for Corda with no gas fees because they do it with a swap. So if you want to listen to Richard speak here, you can find this on the R3 website in their podcast. And I really encourage everyone to go way beyond the headlines of news aggregators. So when you see an opportunity to sign up, for example, here on R3, this is 
the uh, Richard Crook portion of um, their uh, their newsletter where you can put in your email address and get related news to what they are working on. This is a way to really stay timely, insightful, and getting <laughs> more than just what you see on those aggregator news websites. All right, everybody, we are jumping to the fluff. Yes, I did it to 10 minutes. Well, in Japan, the students here can get the Hogwarts book bag. It's now available with this great brickwork pattern, which is from the train platform, nine and three quarters. And you can also choose between four different houses for your crest. <laughs> Even there is a side stitched long pocket where you can store your wand. It's a really, really handsome bag. It's made of leather. You can put your order in now. It won't ship until 2022. It is a little expensive. It runs 1100 US dollars. And speaking of someone who's in big trouble when it comes to looking cool, this is Valentino. They did a shoot for some of their new product and they used an Obi to not only just sit on, which you see the model is doing here, but also walked on it. And Obi is the silk sash that is a textile that goes around the waist when you wear a kimono. And the outrage was so strong from people who felt it was dishonoring the Japanese culture. Valentino felt compelled to send out a very sincere apology for what they had done. And they also pulled all of that advertising. So don't do that. And I want to tell you some little change that very well could come to Tokyo in the northwest area of uh, the Tokyo region. There's a place called Saitama. And Saitama has decided that they are passing a law that went into effect April 1st that you can no longer walk or move or run for that matter, going up or going down on an escalator. So when you get on your escalator, you have to take your position, which in Tokyo is always to the left, and don't move. <laughs> so for safety reasons, they felt that allowing people to maneuver up or down uh, around the people who are standing was just too dangerous. And so uh, it being in a very rural <laughs> society, I'm sure everyone will follow it. And I just want to warn you that if you do come to Japan, uh, this could also be an effect in Tokyo because that's usually how it happens. It starts to roll out and then it picks up steam. So how do I feel about this? Well, I guess I feel okay because... Uh, it is kind of dangerous sometimes when you have people running up and especially running down. I've had people who are in a hurry that have slipped and then they in turn you know, knock you and bump into you and you have uh, the possibility of tumbling down also. So I guess I feel like, yeah, this is an okay rule for me. So there you have it. All right, everybody, do take care. Sign for now. Bye-bye.